Hello everybody and welcome to this week's Onboard Story, brought to you by Coach Dave. Uh, we're going to dive right into it because uh, we, there's a lot of action in this video, uh, a lot of mayhem. Um, it's from the Blancpain in final, it's the final race of the Blancpain Endurance Series uh, where we're competing in the Silver Cup. Here is actually the end of a safety car period. Um, I think we were around P23 or P20 at this moment. Um, just came out of the pits. I just jumped into the car for the final stint and uh, we had a bit of a tough uh, start to the race where we were given a stop go penalty for uh, an issue which I don't think was our fault. So we're fighting our way through the field. I think at this moment here we were like P9 in class and pretty much out of the race actually. Um, but it was the last race of the year for the Blancpain Endurance Series so I wanted to give it my all and not, not give up in any way. We had good tyres on the car and almost immediately after the safety car uh, you know, there's a saying, safety cars breed safety cars. There was an incident on the left there. Uh, four cars in, in one corner were taken out. Um, they all seemed to get going again um, pretty quickly because there wasn't a, another full course yellow or safety car period at that moment. I did expect something, but basically the whole race, I was up against the, the number 20 Porsche, GPX Porsche. This is the same team that won the Spa 24 hours, but um, they did that with the with the factory lineup, whereas here um, they were back with their silver cup car, uh, silver cup entry um, with silver drivers, and one of their drivers is actually also a South African, Jordan Groger, and I thought that he was in the car in front of me for a bit, but it turns out it was actually um, Stuart Hall. So generally, through the weekend, we were struggling a little bit for pace. Um, the, the Porsches were clearly quite fast; they got pole position um, in qualifying. Not this specific Porsche, but the uh, Rover Motorsport Porsche. So clearly their cars were pretty good and mostly they had superior traction to us. So I was struggling to get close enough on the exit of corners and we had superior braking and entry speed. So I couldn't utilize the advantage we had in our car to, to overtake them because they just get the jump on me on acceleration and by the time we got to the braking zones they were a little bit too far. So my initial strategy here after that um, incident that you saw there where four t cars got taken out, it was actually a little bit of survival just to see how the race was going to play out. I took a new approach um, the week before in the, or two weeks before in the Italian GT where I intentionally was quite a lot more conservative and it worked out for us in the end. Because that was a three hour race and this is also a three hour race. So I wanted to again take a conservative approach and over only overtake cars if um, I could clearly find a way through without any Banzai moves just because of the tough results we had had in the sprint series and sprint championship um, where we landed up in walls or facing backwards so being a little bit more conservative but still aggressive you know I'm not gonna just uh, roll out the red carpet and I didn't want to lose any positions but I did want to get in front of this Porsche for some reason so up front he's trying to race with another silver cup car the 19 uh, Grasa Lamborghini and um, trying a lot of moves but also bringing that their fighting was bringing them back towards me I, uh, at the beginning of my stint I was struggling a lot with uh, with understeer relatively speaking but as you see on the left there there's a car that's been spun out I think that was the Pro-Am Mercedes um, and an inevitable full course yellow is about to to happen just because there's marshals on track and they need to slow everyone down so three to one down to full course yellow and very quickly um, they released the safety car on us which branched everyone up again and uh, made it uh, well effectively sort of like a race restart but I totally bottled the restart as you can see the guys in front got a much better jump on me again I had understand the final corner which I wanted to take flat but I uh, had to do a small lift which lost me time down the straight and therefore I had to slipstream my way there and try and get get as close as I could um, so that I could capitalize on any move that the Porsche was going to make on the Lamborghini. So entering turn one, um, a lot of guys were braking quite late there and losing the rear. So I was actually braking 10 meters earlier than normal just so I could get a perfect apex. And it always seemed to, to work. We were strong in sector one, um, a little bit weaker in sector two and strong in sector three. So in sector one, I'd often close up, but not enough to, to get a move into turn four, which is here. And then into turn five, I was having a little bit of um, oversteer on entry, so I couldn't do any big moves here either, just in fear of uh, losing the rear and losing more time. So I wanted to take it as smooth as possible and actually try and get a move done at turn 10, which is the hairpin that's coming up soon. So the Porsche now with Stuart Hall, he is 
really harassing this 19 Lamborghini, which seemed to be struggling just in general. They were lacking a lot of speed, and um, that was good for us. It meant that we could make up some positions. So here, uh, here was my first official, like my best opportunity up uh, at this point. Um, I was thinking to go down the inside of the Porsche, but if I outbreak myself, I was going to send it right into the Lamborghini's door. So again, taking the more conservative approach, maybe if it was a sprint race, I would have done a more aggressive move there. Um, but it was clear to me at this point that our braking was superior. So if I could get close enough in any of these corners on the exit, catch a slipstream and then get close enough for the braking on the next corner, um, I was going to try for a move. But the problem was, as you can see here, as we exit the chicane, the Porsche just launches out of there um, with superior traction and I wasn't able to, to stay close enough. So he's now gonna get, I think he's gonna go for a move here with the 19 Lamborghini. And the whole time, um, my engineer is speaking to me on the radio and he's giving me information. And I actually, for the first time in a long time, said, look, please, no information, unless it's related to full course yellows or yellow flag corners. I just wanna stay focused, I wanna race. And uh, I, need, I need some silence. So usually I want as much information as possible, but because I could see my competitors right in front of me. Um, I, the, the silence was just helping me get back into a, not necessarily a zone, but an area where I could stay focused on the track and just drive my own race. Um, I knew what I had to do. I had to overtake as many cars as possible. So here the Porsche goes down the inside and he slows up the Lamborghini, but not enough for me to get the jump going into turn seven, which is this uh, uphill left-hander, which was catching a lot of us out on entry. It's very easy to lose the rear going through here. You have to clip the curb on the inside, get a nice run up the hill. And by now I'm already planning my move into ten, turn 10. So I have to stay close in T9, which is not easy. You can see I have a little bit of understeer there in the slipstream, um, which is quite normal for the Ferraris. And even though there's a small gap between the two of us, he's breaking so early that I, I knew I could go for the inside. He ran wide there twice the previous laps. But then he gets the undercut here. So I have to go and give him space through the left hand and not lose the rear and the right and then eventually get the move done. Uh, so I was pretty stoked with that move. It's always nice to get your first official move done uh, in the race. But ironically, despite making up so many positions in this race, that I think that was only one of two big or official moves that I did. Um, the rest were basically me avoiding chaos. Um, this, this track in general is... is not really suited to having 48 cars on the grid. Um, it's more suited to sprint racing, and uh, the, the 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 racing itself here can get so chaotic. And I remember last year I wasn't racing in the event, but I was present because I was coaching. Um, by the way, if you want coaching, I do offer it. Uh, I was coaching, and I remember the race was also chaotic last year. It's also the last race of the year. People are fighting for championships, so. This was a big moment. Um, the Ferrari 72, which was fighting for the overall championship, tried to go down the inside of the Bentley and uh, spun, him, spun him around. That created a little bit of chaos for us. I lifted off when cutting the chicane um, because I was anticipating even more uh, accidents happening. But in the end, I probably could have been a little bit more aggressive because I only gained one position there on the 55 silver Audis. Keep in mind that at this point, I have no idea where we are in the race. I've, I've asked the engineer not to tell me anything. I still think that we are around 19th or 20th because I've lost count of the cars that we've crashed into. I mean, that have crashed themselves. And uh, I didn't crash into anyone. And uh, when I left the pits, I think we were P24 or P28. Something, something wild like that. So at this moment, I have no idea where we are. I'm just trying to navigate my way through the field and then just see sort of where we land up. And because we were P9 in class when I left the pits. That part, that part I did know. I'd essentially had I'd almost given up hope on getting a podium finish, which was a major target of us this year in the Silver Cup. We wanted to either win or finish on the podium at some point um, in Silver Cup. But keep in mind, we had a bronze driver in the car, uh, Rina Salikov. So we knew it would be a big ask. On the left there was a Lamborghini that had spun out. And it was strange that they didn't launch a full course yellow for that particular incident because there was marshals in the gravel at this at the fastest one of the fastest corners on the track but anyway the officials luckily nothing happened there um, getting really close now to the Porsche and uh, trying my best to to find a way through and, and another option to overtake is into the chicane this final chicane if you get a move down down the inside it's possible but Stuart he had uh, 
he was very wise to the fact and um, defended really well there so I could, I could never get a move done. Fast forwarding now, um, now firmly in the slipstream and uh, one of my rules for the weekend was not to overtake cars around the outside because uh, especially at this track if they do decide to, to send you it's very easy to send you into the gravel so even though I get the run here on the Porsche um, I probably could have tried a bit of a bigger move around the outside but again I went against my philosophy for this race which was to sort of take it easy here and be more conservative and, and only go for moves which were clear and obvious so yes I know I, some guys did go for moves around the outside but we also saw I think if we saw four moves around the outside three of them didn't work out where the protagonist the attacker actually didn't make it and I had to cut the track and risk penalties or frankly just get sent into a spin so that slipstream there I got a good exit out of the chicane I managed to get a good slipstream down the straight um, he missed the final apex the apex of the final corner which gave me that run um, but it wasn't enough to to go down the inside because these cars are left-hand drive to go to the inside of a right-hander you really have to move the car far over to get any sight and that just exposes you and the other driver to the move that you want to do so you give away quite a lot of information when you try to go for those big inside moves just because of the, the movement of your car here was an example of gaining on the brakes even though I was um, losing the rear he lost the rear even more so there was clear evidence to me that if we got close enough in the big braking areas I could get a move done um, but still not enough not close enough and um, there is a part of this race which I cut out just to for the sake of time where you can see that I lost a lot of time to the Porsche sort of in the middle phase of the stint and I actually thought they were getting away from me um, during the weekend we tended to struggle with uh, with pace and we were only we were hovering around the top 20 like between 18th and 25th uh, on the timesheets the whole race and at this point here we were actually within the top 20 unknowing to me and um, I could start to see that we were starting to come up against guys which did have superior pace than us during the whole weekend but you know you never give up because because of the concertina effect around here here the Stracker Mercedes goes for a move on um, the, the red Audi the red Audi was quite chaotic through the weekend he slams the door on the, uh, on the Mercedes they both slow down I break I over break because again I don't want to get involved in any uh, crashes and uh, we, we managed to gain two positions there it was very easy to to get a bit too excited and um, get involved in these incidents so you had to be conservative if you wanted to make it through the chaos so I got another slipstream um, on the Porsche watching this video over um, during the edits I realized that if I was a bit more aggressive or committed um, during that last lap in uh, last corner incident I probably would have easily um, I probably would have easily uh, overtaken the Porsche down the straight but in the end the conservative approach turned out to be the wiser approach and if you look ahead now you'll see that there's quite a, already quite a lot of field spread we can't see the other guys just because we've had to na navigate multiple incidents at this moment getting close here in turn five but not close enough um, a move into turn seven was never possible for me anyway um, but I'm starting to realize that there's a moment here where the Porsche is perhaps starting to struggle with rear tire grip so now there's another full course yellow I think the red Audi was stuck in the gravel yes there you just missed it and now closing again to the safety car and at this point things get important because now my team tells me listen David you're P4 in class and the car in front of you is P3 so immediately when they told me this I got quite a bit more serious I said okay no more talking on the radio that's it yellow flags only once again let me get this job done so now I thought to myself okay the approach of being conservative is officially out the window if I see any move that is a doable move I'm gonna go for it because this is the last race of the year we yet to score a podium in silver cup and uh, it was quite frustrating season overall so it's it's hero or zero approach now we're either gonna be in the gravel or we're gonna be down the inside of this Porsche there's a quite a lot of uh, cars in front of us. These are the top GT drivers in the world, by the way, just ahead of me, um, fighting for overall positions. It turned out at this point here, I'm P12 overall. Sorry, excuse me. Yes, P12 overall, or P10 overall. Um, I'm somewhere close to the top 10. And now, from being P9 at the, uh, the pit stops to now 
um, having the chance of finishing on the podium when we essentially had given up after our stop and go penalty in the first hour. So really close now. The Porsche is actually fighting the second place Silver Cup car, which is the green Mercedes in front, the number six. The Mercedes cars this whole weekend had quite a bit of pace and a really good advantage over all the other cars in my opinion, except for one Lamborghini, which ended up winning the race, the 563. Is it the 563? Just correct me in the comments. I think it's the 563. It's the one that won the championship. So again, just not quite getting close enough, but because the cars in front of us are fighting so much, I'm getting multiple opportunities to go for moves here. And this is super important because I needed other people in play um, to bring that Porsche close enough to me on the exit of corners so that I could get a move done down the inside of the following corner. Because again, as I mentioned, our braking was better. So now getting a nice slipstream and as you can see in front there's almost four abreast into the first turn and I know for sure now that something's going to go down because every time this has happened there's been uh, an incident. Right up ahead uh, two cars, the leaders actually, the Mercedes and the Audi fighting for overall podium, there they are on the left, they crash into each other and this is my opportunity. I get close enough to the Porsche in the slipstream and I decide to screw it, I'm going down the inside here into turn four. Uh, turn, turn four down on the grass, tap him, he goes a bit wide, I'm staying to the outside, I think to myself, being on the outside is the worst possible idea, actually tap the brakes on acceleration and then undercut him for the inside of turn 5, small door tap, another small door tap here and then protect my line for turn 7, this is turn 6, we're heading into turn 7 um, to, to get that move done for uh, the podium position. So now I'm pretty pumped, I must be honest, this is one of those moments where you're like, you, you seem to look like a hero because it was it was the second last lap of the race which I didn't actually know and uh, we finally managed to get this move done we're finally in podium contention breaking as late as I can to anticipate any move from the Porsche um, so I did run a little bit wide there but it was more like a protection mechanism um, than actually trying to go for a move on the Mercedes now by now I can actually see my number when we come onto the start finish straight I can see that we're within the top 10 um, because there's a massive uh, numbers board down the main straight which shows the top 10 positions and I can see that the number 6 which I knew was silver because it has a silver cup uh, sticker on the back of the bumper is my next um, is my next target but what I didn't know was that we were starting our last laps so getting now on the slipstream and now thinking to myself I knew that he was slower than us because we kept catching him even after uh, major incidents in front of us so I had to find a way past. His name is Davide Fulminelli. Um, I raced against him last year in the Spa 24 hours and uh, we had an epic uh, battle for the lead in the night um, for the lead of Pro-Am in Spa 24. And I managed to get him going up Eau Rouge on the exit of uh, Radion um, down the Camel Strait. I went to the grass to overtake him. So was I going to do a dramatic move like that now? I couldn't be sure but I was so fired up at this point because Two places ahead of this Mercedes was the leader of Silver Cup, driven by Felipe Fraga. He's in the blue Mercedes further down, car number 90. So I'm really starting to smell blood here, but I didn't realize that we'd run out of time, which was a great shame, because I think that we could have, you know, if all of this happened a little bit sooner, maybe we could have actually won this class. But that being said, I still had to, would have had to get past the Rover Porsche, and you just, you just saw how difficult it was to pass the number 20 Porsche. Hopes and dreams. But all that being said, what an epic, epic race. And um, in the end, we managed to grab this podium and finish eighth overall. Um, probably one of my favorite moves of the year. I did another undercut in, um, in, in, in Brands Hatch earlier in the year, which was quite satisfying. But this, this move here, to grab a podium from nowhere, when we were, I mean, at the end of the first stint, we were 38th or 34th. Um, and we've managed, as a team, to fight our way through um, myself, Renat, and, and Dennis all did an amazing job and the, the car was really good in the race so big thank you to Rinaldi Racing. So there you go, we crushed the finish line, I actually had a really good slipstream here and um, was going to go for the move down the inside but it started to real I realized there that he was braking that this must have been the end of the race. So we just ran out a little bit of time to gain another position but in the end super happy. Thank you so much to uh, my channel sponsors Thrustmaster and if you want some swag, some merch please uh, shop.davidperil.net and again, massive thank you to my patron members. If you want to become a patron, just go to patreon.com forward slash davidperil. Until the next lap, I hope you enjoyed that. Speak soon.